43 years after his unfortunate murder, John Lennon's children have finally opened up about their relationship with their father. Some maintain that John Lennon died as a bad man. However, others contest that view, saying that he changed for the better right before the end. Well, what is the truth? And how was his relationship with his children? Let's find out. The day was December 8, 1980, and the time was 5 p.m. John and his partner, Yoko Ono, were leaving the Dakota apartment complex in New York for a recording session at the record plant. Before they left, they met a couple of fans in front of the building and signed some autographs. One of those autographs was to a 25-year-old security guard known as Mark David Chapman. He gave them his copy of their collab album, Double Fantasy, which they were happy to sign. At 10.50 p.m., John and Yoko returned to the Dakota. As they were entering the building, Mark David Chapman showed up once again. This time, he had a gun in his hand. Before John or Yoko could react, he shot John three times, twice in the back and once in the shoulder. Though John was rushed to the hospital, he was pronounced dead on arrival. John's death shocked the world, and everyone wanted to know more about how it happened. While Chapman was happy to thrill everyone with his crazy conspiracy theories, John's close friends and family went totally silent. He did not even have a funeral, further increasing the mystery and the controversy of the whole event. This silence went on for decades, allowing the tragic event to achieve mythological status. Now, 43 years after his death, John's friends and family are finally opening up about their relationship with the legendary artist. What was John's real relationship with his wife, his lovers, his children, and his best friends? What did those relationships say about the kind of person he was? No matter when you were born or where you live, you have undoubtedly heard a John Lennon song before. Do you know the song, Imagine? What about Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds? Well, how about Hey Jude? While fans have their own interpretations of these songs, they were actually cryptic ways for John to reveal how he felt about his loved ones. Coupled with the morsels of information that are coming out about John, the picture of who he really was only gets clearer and clearer. One of the most important relationships in John's life was with his first wife, Cynthia. The two met when they were fellow students at the Liverpool College of Art. Though Cynthia was attracted to John, she was very intimidated by him. However, after learning he was an admirer of the actress Brigitte Bardot, she dyed her hair blonde to imitate her. That did the trick, and soon enough, John started dating her. Cynthia and John's relationship was incredibly tumultuous. John was remarkably unrefined at the time and had no idea how to treat women. He always treated her like he didn't care about her and could be incredibly abusive toward her. But in the same vein, he always got very angry and jealous whenever she was with anyone else. John's own admittance, the only reason he married her was because she had an unplanned pregnancy. He even had a complicated relationship with their son, Julian Lennon. John only began to reevaluate his relationship with Cynthia after he met his second wife, Yoko Ono. He reflected on his cruelty to her in the Beatles song, Getting Better. In the song, he talks about how he went on a journey from being a woman beater to a pacifist. Too bad Cynthia never quit, benefited from that transformation. Cynthia says she left John after he got addicted to the psychedelic drug LSD. However, this reasoning doesn't quite match with what happened in the final days of their relationship. Perhaps the most famous relationship of John's life was with the Japanese artist, singer, and activist Yoko Ono. As a matter of fact, their relationship began when John was still married to Cynthia. After visiting an art gallery, John was intrigued by Yoko's pieces and went so far as to mess with them. While this was his backward way of flirting with Yoko, she was rather annoyed by his antics. Whenever Cynthia was out of town, John would invite Yoko over. Anytime Cynthia asked him about this, he would lie and say he was only interested in her art. One night, Yoko came over when Cynthia was absent, and the two of them recorded their first album titled Two Virgins. The morning after, they made love. When Cynthia arrived at the house, she saw Yoko walking around in her bathrobe. Nonchalant, Yoko's only response was, Oh, hi. Cynthia filed for a divorce from John. Just a few weeks after it was granted, Yoko got pregnant and had a miscarriage. Yoko's relationship with John was an amour fou. Things between them were so passionate that she's often accused of being the one who broke up the Beatles. John even changed his name from John Lennon to John Ono Lennon. They were creatively and romantically committed to each other. Whenever things between them were strained, Yoko went so far as to offer her secretary to John to sleep with. Though the secretary, Mei Peng, was shocked by this proposition, she still accepted. Things between John and Mei got heated, 
Yet still, Yoko remained his one true love. John and Yoko attempted to have children several times. After three miscarriages, they finally gave birth to a son, Sean Ono Lennon. John now had two children by each of his two wives. Yet, the way he treated both his sons was vastly different. John's first son, Julian Lennon, was born when the Beatles were at the height of their popularity. Because of how much touring the Beatles did at the time, John was largely absent in Julian's life. This caused a rift between them, a rift that never sealed. Interestingly, Julian gave John the inspiration for one of the Beatles' most popular songs. After showing him a drawing of a girl surrounded by stars, John asked him what the drawing was supposed to represent. Julian said, that's Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. This became the title of the hit song. Many fans think the song is a reference to the psychedelic drug LSD. However, John has bitterly contested this. In the final years of his life, John tried hard to reconcile with Julian. However, his efforts were too little too late. John himself publicly declared that he was different with Julian because Julian was an unplanned child. Even though he gifted him drum sets and took him on trips to Disneyland, these gestures were no replacement for a present father. Ironically, Julian was much closer to John's bandmate, Paul McCartney, than he was to his father. The song Hey Jude was originally titled Hey Jewel, and it was a gift from Paul to Julian. Till today, the pair remain close. As for John's other son, Sean Oko Lennon, the story was completely different. When Yoko was pregnant with him, she wanted an abortion to avoid the pain of a fourth miscarriage. However, John convinced her to keep it, saying that he would give up his career and become a house husband. When Sean was born, true to his word, John dropped everything to take care of Sean. Throughout the first year of Sean's life, he had a photographer take his picture every single day. These were later published into a book titled Real Love, The Drawings for Sean. While John always spoke critically of Julian in public, for Sean, it was nothing but love and admiration. John was only present for the first five years of Sean's life, but before his death, he left lots of money and instructions on how the boy was to be raised. Even though his father was dead, Sean went through life without a hiccup. After attending prestigious private schools, he became a musician himself, collaborating with such popular acts as Lana Del Rey, Lenny Kravitz, and Lady Gaga. Sean hardly remembers his father, but the picture he has of him is that of a saint. When looking at the big picture, John is a completely different human, depending on who you ask. Ask his first wife and first child, and they'll say he's a monster. Ask his second wife and second child, and they'll say he's an angel. So, what exactly is the truth? Was he both at the same time, or did he really change? There are some parts of John Lennon's life that will always remain a mystery to us. Even his closest friends and family do not understand him completely. Though many people respect him for his music, the enigma of who he actually was remains a fascinating mystery. And that's why he remains such a mythological figure. It's unlikely that there are any definitive answers to whether John was a good man or a bad man. Each person has to make up their own mind about what he was. However, with the information provided by his close friends and family, hopefully it's now easier to make up your mind. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click enjoy and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you on the next one.